Okay, I'm going to recreate the Mirror's Edge Catalyst website using only Webflow. No coding, nothing else, just Webflow. All right, so I created my new site and I keep flipping back and forth between the live site and uh, my creation inside of the Webflow Designer tool. And so I've already downloaded all the assets from the current site, which is like the background images, GIFs, logos, and whatnot. And so here I go making the first row. I made the height 100 VH, VH standing for, uh, which means viewport height. And then I just gave it a background image and set it to cover. All right, so now I'm adding the top nav bar, which is small, just three links, logo and then two things. Here, I'm trying to figure out what font do I use. I tried to look for Euro style in Google Fonts but it's not there, so I looked for something that's similar. And so I came up with Micron or something like that, but close enough. It's a little bit thicker than what they're using, but it should, it's, it's good for now. And now I'm making the top nav bar, sending some padding and some margins for those links. And what am I doing now? Oh yeah, I'm getting the um, hover state color. And so in Webflow, you can set swatches and that's what I did quickly. Um, I set the hover state for that link and then I set the swatch and good to go. And now I'm doing the hero content and I'm setting the first copy to be H2. And the reason why this is H2 is because it's not a super important thing that web crawlers need to pick up. And so I decided H1 should be the release date. And so there I am, and I set another swatch for their special black. And then I, I think this is their life site. Yeah. So I noticed that they're not using Euro style on that one. They use uh, Lato, Lato. And so I changed it there. Uh, now I dragged in the GIF for the video pop-up. And I said, no, I'm going to do a lightbox widget. And I just made a lightbox widget uh, right there. It's just a couple of seconds to make one. And then I put a, uh, I put a, huh, what did I put? Oh, yeah, I put the, sorry, I got distracted. I put a gift in there. And then I set that, uh, I set the actual wrapper to be relative. So that way I can put a circle, an outline of a circle using CSS. And also, uh, I'm going to now make a triangle. So now I'm making a play button. So again, no Illustrator, Photoshop, this is straight CSS. Simple stuff that you can do just by hand coding the CSS, but I'm actually doing it in a more visual way using Webflow's GUI. All right, so trying to position the triangle a little bit better in the center because it looks a little bit off. So, what do I do now? Okay, I'm sizing the triangle a little bit smaller. It doesn't look right to me. I'm trying to get it right in the center. I'm like, oh yeah, it has to be with height zero. And then there you go. I just use CSS translate and make the X four pixels to the right. All right, moving on to the second row. What do we got? Um, so background image. Oh, I'm adding an interaction. And so interactions are pretty cool because you can make jQuery or CSS animations kind of like those waypoints type of thing when you scroll down to a certain section of the page it activates some sort of animation and so, and so that's what I'm doing right now um, I'm setting the scale up oh, okay here we go so I'm setting the translate to like negative 30 and scaling it up and then when I move down to that row I want it to move to origin and move to and size it back down to its original scale. So I had it start at 1.05 scale and negative 30 on the CSS translate translate X. And so when I scroll to it, it'll have a subtle Ken Burns effect like that, like the live site right now. Okay. Okay, now I'm putting the content I'm putting the content in that box, so I need to recreate what they have on the live site. And so, what was I looking for? 
Okay, I was looking for the color and I was like, where's that color? Is it transparent white or transparent? And so there you go. Transparent black, 20%. And then I'm looking, uh, just looking at the corners. There are 12 pixels border radius on the top left and the bottom right. And now I'm adding in the content. So H3s for those headings. Setting my type size and styles and everything. And again, I'm writing CSS as I'm designing it. And so again, I did not code any of this. This is just straight up using the Webflow GUI. And when I press publish, if you see a publish button at the top right, once I publish, press that button, boom, it's up. Mirrorsedge.webflow.io. Webflow gives you a subdomain of your project in every project. And then once you're ready to actually push it live live, you can connect your custom domain to it, like mirrorsedge.com, and then point your DNS servers to it. All right, here we go. I'm putting in the top left corner. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, I set that SVG as a background and trying to size it up and trying to figure out how can I put it on the top left of this box. So kind of fiddle with it, and then I decide, nah, I want to fix the element a different way. I want to put it in a different area in the tree, in the DOM tree. And so I press um, undo a couple of bit of times. Had to change a heart. Did I already do that? I think so. Uh, okay, I'm just playing around with the height and whatnot. I think at this point I like it and then do I move on? Yeah, I move on to the next row. Okay. And by the way, Mirror's Edge, these photos are super pretty. Great job with this game. I cannot wait to play it. I cannot wait to buy it. I don't pre-order much video games, but this one I feel like I have to because I love the first one. It was very unique and different. And just to have an open world of this, ugh. Amazing. All right. So now I'm making a copy of that content box and I'm shifting things around because I forgot to put a max width on the wrappers around the content boxes. So I put a max of 1280. And there we go. Rinse and repeat. So on this interaction, if you see what I'm doing with the right, I'm playing around interactions. Again, it's doing that Ken's burn thing. It's jQuery CSS uh, animations without coding, okay? And so for the content boxes, I'm starting them off as hidden, all right? So when the page loads, it'll load as hidden, and then I can tell my interactions, my Webflow interactions to unhide or fade in those content boxes after after the Kim Burns effect happens. Or even in the middle of it. See? Like that. Yep, so I'm adding timing. Fixing the Ken Burns effect to make it a little bit better. I'm happy about it, and so now I'm on the next row. Am I on the next one? Am I happy? Yes, I am. Cool. So I did a copy and paste of the div, and now I'm changing the background to that, and rinse and repeat. I'm starting the scale on the interaction, and yeah. Right, they're starting to look good. And there we go. Okay. And I think I'm happy at this point with those four rows. And now 
Am I happy? Am I happy? Yes, I am. So, I go to the pre-order row. Which is a top-down view of the world map. I go ahead and change the height to auto instead of 100 VH. Added padding around the content. Changing some type for the H4. Putting in some copy. So I put a paragraph. And then... I remove that placeholder copy. With the real one. There you go. And again, just... CSS away. So I dragged in a button widget and I'm playing around with the padding, the type style, border radius and whatnot. I'm getting the hover state color. Made a new swatch of it and because it's a transition I did the under effects I added a background color uh, transition timing in CSS. Now I'm getting, uh, I'm downloading Font Awesome, the Font Awesome package. And what's cool in Webflow is that you can integrate Font Awesome by uploading the Font Awesome files. Okay. And, and then you go back to the Font Awesome cheat sheet, look for the icon you want, copy it from their web page. Oh, here, here's something cool. Look at that. Columns. Columns and rows. It'll be responsive later. But now I'm pasting in the YouTube icon. And for some reason it didn't work, so I forgot to upload all the Font Awesome font files. Go back to my designer tool, and there we go, it's showing up. Because I can just select Font Awesome in the typography font family dropdown. I made a copy and paste of all four of those. Now I'm looking for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Center all those things, give them all the same class name. I need to push them down a bit. And then I had to put the background color. And funny thing that the background color of this row is EA, EA, EA. Ha, huh. see what you did there, EA. Okay, sizing it down. And then I made a two column, which is like a 25 and a 75%. Now I'm adding the EA, Dice, and Frostbite logos. Look for it, there you go. Copy paste two times. Replace them with the real images. There you go. Give that center one a class name of dice and then made the margins on the left and right big and the rating pending. I give the column, the second column a class so it can be a text align right. Almost done with the uh, desktop version. Okay, setting up the font. Fixing my display setting. I'm like, there you go. Okay, everything looks good. My first publish, and it looks pretty good, but something's not right. And then I figured it out. Uh, there needs to be some sort of gradient in the top left. And so the cool thing is instead of going to like Colorzilla or something or Ultimate uh, Gradient tool or something that I always use, I can just use Webflow and play around with the gradient. And it, it's kind of like Photoshop or Illustrator where you just drag in the value, drag the values with a slider and whatnot and you're good to go. It makes the logo Mirror's Edge pop out more when you have it uh, black like that a little bit. And so, yeah. Gradient tool within Webflow. Freaking awesome. Alright, now I'm doing the tablet version, so you know, just make everything smaller. And on second thought, after after um seeing this, I'm like, oh, instead of font size being pixels, I should have used like VH or VW or something. Or even REMS or something. And I I know that VH and VW works. On Webflow, I'm not sure about M's and REMs. But next project, lesson learned. Okay, why did I pause here? Maybe I was watching Mad Men. Yeah, I was. 
All right. Fixing everything up for tablet size. Moving the background position to 65%. All right, pretty cool. All right, so the dice isn't really, the dice logo isn't really nice. So I removed the margins and it looks better. And then I'm like, you know what? No, let's, instead of the columns being rows, we should just make them column side by side. All right, and then I noticed that Mirror's Edge has a hamburger menu with only two links. And I'm like, why do you even? need a hamburger menu with only two links and then I'm like eh, let me see if I can squeeze this in and not put a hamburger menu on at least the mobile landscape version so I'm fixing it and fixing it I'm like okay that one needs to be a row not columns that one needs to be columns and then I'm at portrait and I'm like ah crap how do I do this i'm like okay you're getting a hamburger menu and so only in mobile portrait will you see this nav bar and so i gave it a class name of hamburguesa and i made it float it to the left and went to town with it started styling it and whatnot <laughs> okay, so when I can play around with the CSS when the hamburguesa is open and closed. And so to access the open state, I just clicked on the cog at the top right and then click on open menu. And there you go so it's open and then I'm like do I really want to do it from the left I'll just do it from the top because at this point I'm like Ugh. so I give it a background color and then I start coloring the links giving it a font style font family what am I doing here okay I'm sizing it down I'm like I'll just do a 100 VH let it slide all the way down and then I was like can I put more just to like and then for some reason it wasn't working like that so I'm like okay we're just having two and it slides down yay hooray and then I'm like oh crap how come the content doesn't fit right and I'm like oh they're using different imagery so I start downloading all the imagery right here mm -hmm. and after I download go back to webflow I'm like here we go let's do this okay so I can't use that as a background I'm like uh how do I do this because I need to push the content down I'm like yeah this is not happening this is not working I gotta figure out another way and so what I do is I backtrack and then I add in the image and then I bring the image to the top. And then I make sure that the image only shows on mobile portrait. And then I start going down. Rinse and repeat. Fixing up the hero content. And then I'm like, okay, it has some sort of gradient. So I should add that gradient. And I'm like, wait. That doesn't look right because the gradient is slanted. So I remove the gradient, add a new a new div and call it hero angle and I put it to the top. And then I do a CSS rotate, make scale it bigger and make sure that my overflow is set to none or hidden. And I just do the same thing to the rest. And here I go, fixing up the content. And the content box, I'm removing the styles and hiding stuff that doesn't need to be there. Okay, so I hid that top left UI treatment.
fixing up the type colors. It's almost done. Okay, just doing a lot of rinse and repeating for the rows. And lastly, that. Yeah. And that is it. Um, yeah, if you need any more information, just hit me up. I'm on Twitter, the Pixel Geek. You can see this live site at mirrorsedge.webflow.com. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And leave a comment below. Like this and anything else that people ask for as a YouTuber. All the things. So thanks for watching. And if you want any more time-lapse videos of sites that should be designed inside of Webflow, let me know in the comments. Thanks. See ya.